In this video, I'm going to talk about graphing linear inequalities. Um, this this uh, this method of graphing is going to be very similar to what I've done in previous videos about graphing lines, about graphing linear functions. Uh, it's going to be basically, uh, you're going to see a lot of the same vocabulary, a lot of the same words, um, but basically we're just adding more to it. We're adding inequalities to it. Um, so what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be shading. We're going to be doing um, uh, solid lines and dotted lines for boundaries, things like that. <clears throat> now, in, in, ex in your extensive studies of uh, inequalities, inequalities are actually going to be much, much more helpful in in um, real life than uh, than regular equations are, uh, simply because uh, in real life you have um, you have numbers that don't quite fit a model, or or when you're selling or buying, you you your your numbers of selling and buying are going to be up and down. So actually, inequalities could be much much more useful in the real world um, than actual regular equations. But anyway, uh, we're just here just to talk about graphing linear equalities, just the very basics. So here we go. Um, the first thing you want to do, um, I'm going to concentrate here on the left. I have my first uh, equation, or my first inequality, I should say. Y is greater than negative one third x plus two. So you can see that this, this inequality is in slope-intercept form. So let me, since I'm referring to it, slope-intercept y equals mx plus b. So with slope-intercept form, you can graph an equation. We're going to use that to our advantage here. Um, in the previous videos, I've talked about many, many different ways of graphing equations. We're going to stick with slope-intercept form because it is the most efficient, most effective form of graphing equations. So we're going to stick with that. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw not just a line. When we're graphing inequalities, we don't call it a line. We're going to call it the boundary. Okay, now you'll see why we call it a boundary here in a minute when we start doing some shading. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to treat this inequality, I'm going to treat it like an equal sign. So I'm going to graph the equation y equals negative one-third x plus two. Okay, I'm going to graph that first, and then uh, I'm going to kind of shade my boundaries, okay? Uh, shade either above or below my boundaries. Okay, now the first thing I need to decide is, okay, where do I start? So on a on slope intercept form, you always start with a y intercept. I have a y intercept of two, so that's going to be right here. Okay, so that's the first thing I start with. Now from there, I'm going to use my slope. I have a negative slope, so my line is going to look something like that. Okay, but that's not what the actual line is, but I know that's what it's going to look like. So I have a slope of negative one third. Get rid of that. Slope of negative one third. I'm going to drop one and then go one, two, three. Rise one, run three. There's one point. Uh, I can't run three anymore, so I'm actually going to go back up here. I'm going to rise one, run one, two, three. So there we go right there. Okay, so I, now I have three points to use to graph this. Um, when you're graphing inequalities, I suggest that you put a bunch of points, uh, three, four, five, whatever it takes. Um, make sure um, that when you when you create this boundary, that you go from the edge of your graph to the edge of your graph. Uh, you'll see why here in a minute again with our with the shading that we have to do. Uh, it's much much easier to understand if you make a very large line, a very large boundary. It makes a lot more sense. Okay, so. Now, I, I mentioned earlier about dotted lines and solid lines. When I'm drawing boundaries for my inequalities, when I'm drawing boundaries, uh, I either need to use a solid line or a dashed line. Okay, now the easy way to remember this is if I have greater than or less than, I use a dotted line. All right, if I have greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, I use a solid line. That's the easy, that's a short, easy version for it. Now, technically, what that means is dotted lines mean you do not include points that are on that line. Okay, dotted lines mean you do not include points on that line. They are not included in your solution. Okay, so we want numbers y's that are bigger than this line. So the thing is, we want it to be bigger than this line. So anything that's actually on this line is not going to count. If we're on the line, we're not bigger than the line. We want to be bigger than it. Okay, so that's kind of a logical rationale to this. So what I, what that basically means is I want to make I want to make dotted lines. So a couple dotted lines here, 
It doesn't have to be quite perfect. I'm a little slanted there, but that's okay. That right there, that is my boundary. That is my boundary. With that boundary, I'm either going to shade up or I'm going to shade down. And that sometimes can be confusing depending on what your line looks like. A lot of students will think, oh, should I shade left or right? No, 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 no. With inequalities, you shade up or you shade down. That is it. You shade up or you shade down. Um, there, one, there is one specific time where you might shade left and right, uh, but I might go over that in a later video. Okay, now from here, I need to shade. This creates a boundary, and now I need an area to shade. Y's are greater than this line. That tells you where to shade. Okay, I want to shade greater than this line. This is how I read this. The Y's that I want are bigger than this line. So as I look at this line, where are the Y's greater? The Y's are greater up. Up. Up here, the Y's are bigger, they are greater. That is the area that I want. That is the area that I want. So this is my shaded area. And that is it. Okay, that is how you graph inequalities. Now, let's go into what this actually means. Why do we shade? Why do we have boundaries? Why do we have these things? Okay, now, when we... When we shade these, we're looking for solutions. Inequalities have many, many solutions. Remember, your basic inequalities, if x is greater than 3, if you have a number line, if x is greater than 3, if 3 is right here, all the numbers that are that way are bigger than 3. And so you have a lot of solutions. You have an infinite number of solutions, and we use a number line to represent this. Okay, so that's kind of a blast from the past there. Now, when we have in a, when we have multiple variables, okay, when we have multiple variables like we have over here, we have x's and y's. Okay, we're looking for x y coordinates that are solutions to this equation. We're looking for x's and y's that satisfy this equation, that work for this equation. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do to show to show you this is I'm actually going to choose a few points to show you what I mean by solution. So actually in this area, right here, big dot right here, okay? That right there, that's a point, right there at that intersection, kind of a big point so we can all see it. Okay, that point is three, three, uh, that's okay, three, three, that's that point right there. That is within my boundary, that is, that is um, in the shaded area, okay? That point is a solution to my equation. Any point in this shaded area is a solution to my equation, is a solution to my inequality. Okay? That means any one of these points I can plug in to my inequality and it will be satisfied. Okay, so let's actually try that. Let's try the point 3, 3. So I have a 3 for a y and I have a 3 for an x. Okay, a little bit of math here. 3 is greater than, uh, 3's will actually cancel. Times by 3, divide by 3, they'll cancel to negative 1. And 3 is greater than 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Is that true? Is 3 greater than 1? Yes, it is. So this point, 3, 3, that we plugged in, satisfies the inequality. It is true. You can think of it this way. If you plug it in, the inequality is true. Fantastic. Okay, so now the thing is, what if you go outside the boundary? What about all this stuff down here? What does this mean? Okay, so let's try a point down here. Let's try one negative truth. Let's try this point down here. Actually, let me use a different color here. Let's use black. Okay, so that point right there, one negative two. So let's, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take, I'm going I'm to do the work, but I'm going to do the work with a different point. I'm going to use one negative two. Okay, so negative negative 2 for the y's, and 1 for the x's. Uh, of course, I made it difficult for myself because now this is going to multiply to give me a fraction. That's okay. Negative 2 is greater than um, negative 1 third plus 2. Okay, negative 2 is greater than, okay, so uh, 2 and then take away 1 third is going to be 1 and 2 thirds. Okay, 1 and 2 thirds. All right, now take, a, now take a look at our end result. Negative 2 is greater than 1 and 2 thirds. That's not true. That's not even close to true. 
this negative 2, that's a lot smaller than 1 and 2 thirds. This is not true. Not true. Okay, so this point, which is outside of the shaded area, outside the boundary, this point is not true. Okay, that's why this shaded area, these are all the solutions that satisfy the inequality. These numbers out here, they're not going to. They're going to create stuff like this that's not true. Okay, so that tells you, that gives you an idea of why we shade, why we have boundaries, and what, what the shading and what the not shading, what all that means. That, that's all the stuff that we have for inequality. Okay? All right, so basically we're looking for points that work and for points that don't work. Okay, all right, so now I'm on to my second example. That, that, was, that, that was a lot there. There's a lot of explaining to go through there. You might have to rewind and check that out again, but it's a lot of explaining to go through right there. We get rid of this. We get rid of this to concentrate on my second problem, my second graph that I have over here on the right. Okay, here we go. All right, different color. So now, why is, this is my equation, excuse me, inequality. This is my inequality. Y is less than or equal to negative 1. Hmm. If I look back over here, I had X's. So if I look back over here, I don't have X's. So that actually tells me this is a vertical or horizontal line. Okay, now remember back to when you studied those. If I have Y equals negative 1, the Y's, those are horizontal lines. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're making this. So, okay, it's going to be a horizontal line at negative 1. Now, there's my starting point. Now i got to decide, is it a dotted line or solid line? Y is less than or equal to negative 1. It is going to be a solid line. It's going to be a solid horizontal line. It's going to be a solid boundary. Okay, now in this case, we, have, we only have two choices. We can either shade up or shade down. All right, so let's read our problem and see which direction we're supposed to shade. The y's, the, sh the shaded portion that I want, are less than negative 1. Y's are less than negative 1. So as I look at this point, where are the lot y's less than? The y's are less than down here. So this is where I want to shade. This is where I want to shade. There we go. And that's it. So this, this top part up here, this top part up here, all of these points will not work for this inequality. Down here, on the other hand, all of these points will work for this inequality. Okay, that's what the shaded areas mean. Okay, um, that's it. That's all I have for graphing inequalities. Those are my two examples. I know the first one was a little bit long-winded, but I had to go over the meaning behind the shading. Why do we shade? Why do we have dotted or solid lines? Okay, those type of questions, once answered, give you a better understanding of why we do all this stuff. What do shaded areas actually mean? Okay. All right, hopefully that was helpful. That is graphing linear inequalities. Uh, I hope this video was of some help to you, and thank you for watching.